uh, two men were walking in the woods and a bear came at them about 50 feet from them and the one man quickly pulled down his backpack and took his running shoes quickly start putting his running shoes on and the other guy looks at him and says why are you putting the running shoes on there's no way in this world you and I can escape the bear he says I'm not putting the run sho running shoes to outrun the bear he says why are you putting the running shoes then he says to outrun you <laughs> but you are not like that right you are your neighbor's keeper can somebody say amen you're gonna help your neighbor get to the conference. You're gonna help him to get closer to Jesus. Can somebody say amen? You're not gonna feed him to the wolves. You're not gonna feed him to the, uh, to the bears. I wanna talk to you today about a habit of fasting. Uh, food is designed by God. Food is good. Amen. Food is for strength. Food is for satisfaction. Apostle Paul says, I think in Corinthians 8.8, 8, and he says that food doesn't bring us closer to God and doesn't put us further from God. And so food is, is a good thing. Um, but just like sex is a good thing too. When you are single, you abstain from it. And when you are married, it's, it's limited to a particular person. So is food. It's a gift from God. But I do believe that us as Christians, we must understand that there are people in the Bible who lost their blessing like Esau because of food, like Adam and Eve because of food. Jesus was tempted with it and it's something that we as Christians need to learn to manage in our life and we as Christians need to develop not only this particular, uh, you know, radically once in a while when we hit a problem to go into fasting, but to live a lifestyle of fasting. We practice tithing as Christians in the area of our finances and I genuinely believe that fasting should be as normal, as routine, as tithing. You don't tithe once a year, you know, I don't tithe as a follower of Christ. I tithe every single month and the same thing has to happen in the area of fasting. We have to develop a routine with fasting not just you know a church declares it in January okay I'm gonna go fast in January but now it's a holiday season so I'm just gonna go ahead and just you know kind of eat myself happy but that you develop a lifestyle a habit of fasting when you develop a routine of fasting you grow but when you take a radical step in fasting like you go further than your routine this is when you stretch the same way happens with tithing for example when you tithe you grow financially but when you take a radical step in your finances called sacrifice like maybe once a year you give a vehicle or once a year you go through your clothing you realize you have a lot of good stuff and you just give some things out it goes above your tithing what it does is it stretches your finances exactly the same thing can happen in the area of fasting for many of us westerns today the area of fasting is a really it's almost like a it's like a bad word it this word immediately just brings these chills inside of your bones it's like you're gonna be tortured and you're gonna be afflicted and all of those things it has to be very natural just like giving and just like praying it unlocks the blessings of God in our life in a very unprecedented ways can somebody say amen I read a study yesterday that was uh, really interesting where they said fasting for a little as three days can regenerate the entire immune system even in the elderly scientists have found in a breakthrough that they describe as remarkable a fasting diets have been criticized by nutritionists for being unhealthy but new research suggests starving a body kick starving the body kick starts stem cells into producing new white blood cells which fight off infection in 2003, a mouse study overseen by Mark Matson, a head of um, National Institute of Aging Neuroscience Laboratory, they said that the mice that fasted regularly were healthier than the mice that didn't fast. And they, they, they found that they, uh, they had lower levels of insulin and glucose in their blood, for example, which uh, signified increased sensitivity to insulin and reduced risk of diabetes. They did the studies on different animals where they found out where they take peri periodic time of complete withdrawal from food. It actually, you know, the fear is it's going to kill me. It actually almost restarts and reboots your immune system and reboots your health. God didn't give us the habit of fasting for health. He's given us for spiritual reasons but the side effect of that is that your health begins to be renewed. Guys like Moses who fasted 40 days on the mountain supernaturally without water. You know you see at the age of 20 his eyesight was very strong and he was very strong physically. 
and so God wants us to live a life of health God wants us to live a life of spiritual strength and God wants us to live a life where our soul is being sanctified and for that to happen he instituted this discipline called fasting actually fasting everyone is fasting in the world on this earth it's part of your lifestyle already you don't realize it probably but the English dictionary has helped us because the English dictionary called breakfast break fast a breakfast actually is you are breaking your 8 to 12 hour fast which you do kind of by default when you go to sleep so whether you realize it or not you are already fasting every single day for 8 to 12 hours now some are like I'm not fasting I'm 2 in the morning I'm there at the fridge well except you but everyone else is fasting and so we need to understand on this earth this is part of our lifestyle on this earth to live a life of fast whether you go eight hours so you can go 72 hours but God on this earth in heaven this habit is going to be ended but on this earth this habit must be maximized and practiced regularly for your spiritual life to grow with God can somebody say amen now from the beginning I'm gonna mention right away I don't want those of you in here today who maybe have diabetes pregnant or have or maybe nursing moms or maybe children or those who have a certain disease in your body that does not or certain weakness in your body that you're not able to go more than 12 hours or more than 24 hours without food you can still fast some other things and you can still fast with things maybe like a partial fast or maybe you can you know turn off the tv turn off the social media and coffee for like three days or seven days and God still sees your heart do not allow when we're gonna go into fasting as a church in January or when we practice that every single month first three days don't simply disqualify yourself or feel bad about it just use what you can do in that season of your life that you are in right now if you are a child or maybe you have children and you're saying you know what I really want my children to fast also it is not wise for your children to fast what is wise is you can take out remove the wi-fi in the house this can be as wife as a fast unless of course they need to use it for school or turn off the Netflix or you know say hey kids no sweets for next three days and we will take time to get close to God amen or uh Another thing that, that we must understand is that we have to be the people who embrace it and not to be afraid just because you are not able to do it in Jesus name. I'm going to read a verse from Leviticus. This is a, a feast that God or a holiday, I'm sorry, God instituted for Israelites, Yom Kippur, a day of atonement. And this is the in Leviticus chapter 16 verse 29 and I'm going to read it from the New King James Version. This shall be the statue forever for you. On the seventh month, so on July, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict your souls. Now every theologian in the world will agree that what this means and what the Jewish people actually do on that day is they fast. Afflict their souls. This doesn't mean you go beat yourself and you hurt yourself. It just means you fast. Afflict your soul and do not work at all, whether a native of your own country or a stranger who dwells among you for on that day the priest shall make an atonement for you to cleanse you that you may be clean from all of your sins before the Lord it is the Sabbath of solemn rest for you and you shall afflict your souls it is the statue forever that means it's something that God still envisions for us to do today 3,500 years ago this was instituted now the word afflict your soul it's very interesting because God presents fasting as an affliction to our soul now if you ever went fasting you understand it is an affliction to your soul because during fasting you get moody you get cranky during fasting you you can even actually feel depressed there during fasting you may even periodically for a little bit of time feel completely no passion for God whatsoever you're like I'm fasting to have a passion and I had it before I started to fast and so why because your soul is being afflicted during fasting it's not just your body that is kind of going through throwing a fit the king belly that is throwing you a fit letting you know I am not very happy at you right now but your soul is actually being afflicted the word afflict your soul in the original language is a very actually negative word it's what a man does to a woman when he rapes her it's humiliation 
it's almost like breaking down it's it's practicing that control afflict your soul see the worldly people people who do not know Christ do not have the Holy Spirit they live a fleshly life it means their bodies rule their decisions their flesh controls their decisions a lot of religious people they are soulish people what does it mean a soulish person a soulish person is the one who is stubborn means their will is not broken they're emotional easily offended because their emotions are not submitted to God and they're in the head always confused a soulish person is someone who is stubborn emotional and always confused what fasting does is we see here is that God allows the fasting it takes the soul and the soul goes through a breaking a sanctification period because your mind goes crazy your emotions go raging even your will because it says no I don't want to do this it slowly gets broken and you graduate from being a soulless person to a spiritual person because your spirit gets quickened and awakened amen God wants you to be a spiritual person now I understand where spiritual for many of us means religious or self-righteous better than thou holier than thou spiritual is somebody who walks like this no 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 spiritual person is someone who has their soul under control and who lets their spirit lead their soul not the way other way around why do you need to fast is because you can be in danger of being an emotional drama queen or an emotional roller coaster stubborn and if you're stubborn you can lose your job you can lose your marriage you can lose your friends and if you're always confused in the head you will miss good opportunities your soul needs to be sanctified and for your soul to be sanctified one of the ways not the only but one of the ways is through fasting through fasting your soul is afflicted for a little period of time your body throws a fit but then the body goes in silence the soul comes down and the spirit that was like a neglected child begins to be fed begins to be strengthened and then you recognize your emotions they get stabilized your will gets submitted to the will of God and your mind has a sense of clarity and your body eventually even gets better your sicknesses there are people who get healed by fasting and they get changed through that discipline amen Fasting is not starvation. Starvation is involuntarily. Fasting is your choice. You choose that. S starvation is you don't control that. Fasting you control that. Amen. I'm going to give you just briefly uh, four benefits, four doors that fasting can unlock in your life. One is calamities of life where fasting can change the calamities of life. Calamities of life are the things that come unexpected. It's the challenges that we can experience in our life. It's the problems that we are facing. When you start to fast, something begins to happen. These challenges invite the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to see change in that area of your life. Ezra was one day a cupbearer and he was, uh, Ezra was asking the king for the money and the, the Jewish people gave him some money also wealthy Jewish people to rebuild Jerusalem and somebody recorded that Ezra at the time when he was going back to Jerusalem was carrying 25 tons of silver to 7,500 pounds of gold loaded with wealth loaded with blessings from the Jewish people to take to Jerusalem to re begin to help Jerusalem and he doesn't have an army he wants to go to to Jerusalem he doesn't have any protection and Ezra does this instead of asking the king for the hookups he goes in and tells the people he's going with he says guys we will declare a three-day fast and during these three days we're going to implore God of heaven so he will give us protection against the bandits and against the gangs and against the people who are want to attack us and take away our wealth and the Bible says when they fasted God prevented the calamity God did, God protected them and everything went smoothly when you fast the challenges that you may experience maybe you have something coming against you that you cannot change on your own maybe something is risen against your family or against your health maybe something is risen against your marriage or against your finances when you say you know what I've prayed I've done everything but Lord what I do now is I humble myself before you you will see God's intervention you may say why is this so important because the Bible says biblical definition of humility is fasting 
in scriptures it says David says I humbled myself with fasting this is what happens when you humble yourself before God Bible says God gives you grace grace is unmerited favor grace is this force that helps you to get ahead to get out and to get through that grace is not given to people listen up who need it that grace is given to people who are humble and the best way to humble yourself is by fasting when you fast you open the door for God's supernatural intervention in the area of your life and your situation I've seen this the first hand uh, with our pastor when many years ago when our church kind of hit a very rough patch and at around the same time uh, things were very challenging in his family and things were very challenging and as the market the crashed at the time it was kind of like hell broke loose on everybody and things were very difficult in his business things were very difficult with his real estate and things were very difficult with his job and things were very difficult with some of the children uh, in, in his family and our pastor instead of panicking instead of you know throwing a fit what he did is he started to fast and he went for 40 day fast just on water and during that fast you know thanksgiving i think passed and then he went again for another 40 days of fasting now nothing changed immediately but then he goes to the ministry of tb joshua and out of nowhere out of the 10,000 people god prophesies to him through tb joshua within a short period of time out of nowhere i get a phone call upstairs where gary and fiona the ministers of tb joshua reach us and they happen to call exactly at the time that we pick up the phone because as you know we don't pick up the phone at the church we pick up the phone they come with the anointing water next thing that happens is that there is the connection that happens with this ministry which begins to bring deep cleansing spiritual cleansing in our church see people look at that and they say oh that's a coincidence you know how come a small church like yours at the time connected with tb joshua see nothing happens an accident fasting and prayer of many years is never lost and it might be not we may be benefiting today you know you are here but you don't understand you think you came here because somebody invited you but there was a shift that happened in a spiritual world because when you are in a calamity and you are down to nothing you begin to humble yourself before God and God brought a change and next thing that happened is that when Martin went to be there and then pastor's son the one that he was interceding for got, got delivered and then the finances begin to change and then the children's finances where you see them now opening businesses and you see God's blessing and you may stand on the side and you say well you know uh, that just is so not cool but you don't know where when man humbles himself God releases grace God doesn't release grace when you need it God releases grace when you humble yourself for it can somebody say amen you know and then just recently when Shepherd Bushiri is coming to our conference this year you know a, a pastor who has you know 85,000 members and to come to Tri-Cities for our church it is a miracle for that to happen you know and if you hear the story of how Ilya went to South Africa not to meet Shepherd Bushiri but to help Apostle John Chi and then stayed oh, what's a coincidence for Ilya to stay in the same hotel the shepherd Bushiri stayed in and God to wake him up during the night and says go to that elevator and there's a man there and you need to talk to him what's a coincidence see there's not nothing coincidental that happens in the spiritual world what happens is this is God releases grace and he says why he releases grace God does not release grace just for free just because he just mini mini money he just goes in and chooses randomly he releases grace on people who he says if you humble yourself and God shows how we can humble ourselves one of the ways we can humble ourselves is through fasting I'm not saying it's the only way but we can humble ourselves and then when apostle when a prophet you know shepherd met Ilya next in that relationship that started and now that he's gonna come but there's a lot more that's gonna happen even outside of the conference with our church's relationship or our church's uh, connection to that man of God I want to tell you something that things the fastings and the prayers of our church from the 15 years ago not one of them have went in vain all the time of standing with the posters all of these prayers that we pray here and Glenn we are not praying them just for now we are not praying for people today we are praying for people 20 30 50 60 70 years after this we are not just praying for now we are believing that we have the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit heals through us moves through us now but the prayers that are being prayed for they are still being deposited for the generations yet unborn 
Can somebody say amen? And so first is calamities of life. Number two is it's in our connection to God. We fast to establish connection or renew connection with God. With our connection with God, it's like, a, it's like your, your TV receiver. You know, if the football is going on and you have a bad receiver, sometimes the TV starts flickering. How many of you, you just enjoy watching the last two minutes of the game with the TV flickering? You're like, just get a kick out of it. Amazing. I'm just glory. No, you get mad. You get upset. And you know the problem is not with the football. The problem is with your TV. The problem is not with, with, with the team that is playing right now. The problem is with the receiver. With time, our heart gets corroded. With times, our hearts get dull. Our passion for the Lord just kind of dines. Our passion for Netflix awakens. With time, you know, our zeal for macchiato gets strong and our passion for the Holy Ghost just kind of gets weak. And sometimes it's reflected by how we attend church. It's reflected how we pick our nose during the worship. We look for the flies. There's none of them here, but you're still looking for them somewhere. It's noticeable and it's not to judge you. It happens by default. We all by default get complacent in our relationship with God. When you fast, this is what happens your passion for the Lord, your hunger awakens. When they came to Jesus and uh, they said, Jesus, your disciples are not fasting. John's disciples are fasting. We are fasting, the Pharisees, and your disciples aren't fasting. And Jesus said this, and I love this thing. Jesus says, when I am gone, they will fast. You know what that means? When you feel that Jesus' presence is withdrawn, start fasting. To always stay close to him you gotta maintain not just once in a while not just when you have problems but for your relationship with Jesus to be close you gotta continue fasting Jesus says when I am gone they will fast and so the idea that Jesus paid for everything on the cross I no longer need to pray I no longer need to fast I no longer need to live holy guys that is not biblical positionally we have everything in Christ but Christ tells us as his disciples we are to embrace a lifestyle of fasting amen you know prophet Shepherd Bushiri this year went for uh, 90 day fasting just on water now don't try that at home that's a very long time and that's not good if uh, God doesn't lead you. Uh, we might have a, you might go see Jesus very fast. <laughs> and he said this about his fast. He fasts very regularly as a prophet, as, as a man of God. He said, I have all the money that I ever need. He says, my church has more people in two years than I ever dreamed of. Uh, God's gifts are flowing strongly through my life. He says people ask me why do you fast and he reveals a secret he says i have never in my life fasted for the problems in my life I've never fasted for my healing i've never fasted for the breakthrough and i've never even fasted for god's gifts he says i fast for one reason for my relationship with god and i'm thinking i'm like 90 days i mean like three maybe perhaps four i mean if you really want to have a strong close in authentic real genuine five i see there are people who reached everything and who are as hungry having a million dollars as most of us were hungry when we were broke. I don't want to be most passionate for God when I had nothing. I want God to trust me to be passionate for Him when I can drive a Mercedes, live in a nice house and still burn for the cause of Christ. Can somebody say amen? Because see some of us we were passionate for God when we were nothing, when we had nothing going on. But now you have something, God healed you or God blessed you. God gave you a car and a house. You walk with this. Like, I, I don't need this. Even the way sometimes we, 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 we have this kind of an attitude. Well, I'm good with my relationship with God. You know, you can be great. You know, you can grow. You know, you can deepen that relationship with God. And that happens through fasting. Can somebody say amen? Point number three. What fasting does is it unlocks our calling, the calling of God. So not only it helps in our connection to God, not only it helps to get us out of calamities, but it begins to unlock our calling, our calling. Jesus who tells us to fast, he did not fast because of a problem. He fasted because of a purpose. He went for 40 days to fast to unlock the purpose that God has given him and that purpose is to save souls. 
we see in the New Testament something very interesting. I was yesterday and a few days before uh, observing the New Testament and I noticed there was very few fasts in the New Testament because of problems. In the Old Testament it's full of you know the city of Nineveh fasting because they, they had a wrath of God. Ahab was fasting because God says you know I'm gonna destroy your descendants and we see Israelites fasting and we see you know Esther fasting and we see different people fasting because there was problems. In the New Testament we see people fasting a lot but not because of problems because of a purpose of God on the life of the church. In book of Acts we see the church gathered to fast to please God and God sent out the missionaries. We see Cornelius fasting not because he had a problem. He just wanted to know more of what God wanted to take him and God's angel comes. We see Anna staying in a temple as a widow instead of saying God send me a husband. She says God send the Messiah and God sends Jesus Christ to, to Israel. See Jesus did not just come on accident. There were people who dedicated their life to seek and pray to God to send a revival to Israel and Jesus was an answer to that. Jesus was also fasting. Not because he had, he needed a wife or he needed a breakthrough. It's because he was fasting. Say God anoint me for the ministry that you called me for. God wants you to fast for your ministry that you have as a mother, as a father, as a grandfather, as a businessman, as the person of influence in your community and in your family. There has to be a time where it's not the pain that motivates you to see God but your purpose motivates you to see God. Some people they need God constantly to give them trouble for them to stay on their knees. God doesn't want to send you trouble to get you close to Him. God wants to whisper to you in your pleasures but seldomly He is heard. Sometimes He will scream in our pain but He doesn't want to scream. He wants to develop a close relationship with you where He can whisper to you and you can hear Him. But sometimes we are so deaf because we only, we only hear when something is hurting, something is broken and then we are on our knees. Then we are in the morning prayer. Then we are fasting. God says, come on, grow. Let's mature. When you have everything, pray fast seek my face learn how to be passionate when you're comfortable amen, amen. Jensen Franklin who started the fasting movement and actually today tomorrow and the day after uh, he called the whole country to fast for the election and he said uh, the fasting has been his lifestyle since he was an evangelist. He said him and his brother used to travel and they would um, travel and preach. He would preach one night, his brother would preach another night. The brother, the time that his brother would preach, Jensen Franklin would fast. The time that he would preach, his brother would fast. He says, I lived from the beginning of my teenage years until now, lived a lifestyle, not just once in a while, but a lifestyle of fasting. And then he started fasting for 21 days as an individual, as a single person. He said, nobody knew me in America. I was just traveling in a smaller little village churches. And the 21 day fast is the first gift he received as a, to the ministry of one million dollars. He says then during the fasting God revealed to him to start the church and how he started the church and now it grew to some 10,000 members. Then another church in California and most of you know that he's the advisor for the evangelicals now for Donald Trump and God uses him today in a very extraordinary way. His ministry he said that started from something very small, blew up something very big but till this day if you watch his ministry every January and every month as he teaches he continues the same kind of a lifestyle that he did earlier. Your calling can be unlocked if you discover the habit, not just occasional, not just when I was 16 or when I had a little extra weight and I was trying to lose it, decided I'm going to obey Jesus and lose weight at the same time. Not just that, but I'm going to develop a discipline for fasting. Can somebody say amen? And the last that I want you to write down is to conquer the devil. We fast to conquer the devil. There was many examples of that. The battles of Israelites against the Benjamin and they couldn't conquer them and then when they fasted they conquered them. When Jesus says about the little boy, the disciples were trying to pray for deliverance who had epilepsy, who had, a, who had this problem and disciples prayed and prayed, couldn't receive, couldn't break through and Jesus said this kind goes not but by prayer and fasting. I want you to see this verse in Isaiah. If you can put out the verse. In Isaiah 58.6 this is this not the fast that I have chosen. Now typically this verse is used to discredit fasting. 
because God you know talks about the day of atonement Yom Kippur the one that we read in the beginning and God you know looks at people who just simply go without food and they bind people they hurt people and God is saying come on guys fasting is not just going without food you got to release the prisoners you got to help but I want you to read this in the new light God says is this not the fast I have chosen to lose the bonds of wickedness to undo the heavy burdens to let the oppressed go free so that you break every yoke God has chosen a fast to be as one of the things you can do to be bonds of wickedness meaning wicked things you continuously do that you cannot stop doing you feel like start fasting to undo heavy burdens do you feel heavy burdened do you feel like the world is crushing on you God says is this not the fast that I have chosen so I can remove heavy burdens so that I can break the bonds of wickedness means the sins you keep falling into you may say well Vlad I've been through a prayer line try a prayer life this is what the Bible says to let to let the oppressed go free do you feel oppressed God says is this not the fast I have chosen to let the oppressed go free and that you not the anointing water now not the anointing oil not the pastor you break every yoke God says is this not the fast I've chosen that I remove your heavy burden that I break the constant sin that you fall into they just say I've tried I've tried I've tried and I have people all the time write to me especially young men and they say Vlad I've tried everything to stop this particular sin and what they usually mean is I have an accountability partner I installed a software and I went to the pastor for confession God says is this not the fast I've chosen to break the bonds of wickedness to shatter them out of your life and for you to walk out free in Jesus name I've seen this happen in my own life when the grip the bond of the pornography that was broken not through the power of fasting through the power of God but as I submitted myself through fasting the same thing that was happening in my mind when it came to marriage and I would would like somebody and, and not not be able to get married something was happening here in the head the affliction of the soul cleared that out and I was married eight months later after our 21 day fast six years ago God can revolutionize your life I'm not asking you for occasional but a lifestyle in Jesus name take out your notes and just write down six very simple tips the first one is make it a habit fasting is not occasional make it a habit what we encourage is once a month take three days first week of three days just take the time to fast if you're working on a heavy job and it's construction you say I'm not able to do it do something that is like fasting whether you do a little bit less or you you cut something out but make it a habit number two take it slow if you've never fasted going on a seven day fast is not wise if you a young child you know it's better to maybe go just 24 hours without food or go without other things but do not throw yourself into something that you are gonna get burned by because you don't have no experience in it number three drink a lot of water the more you drink when people go into fasting and they drink coffee this is what happens after a few days your stomach goes to sleep the more you put milk and other things into your stomach you keep waking up your stomach and then your stomach keeps throwing you a fit your stomach will give you a fit for a few days unless you keep waking him up through the liquids that you drink the best thing to do is you drink water it flush out, flushes out your system and it keeps your stomach asleep and your spirit awake number four you feed your spirit if you do not during fasting listen to sermons and spend more time in God it's actually starvation it's a diet my best thing to do when I fast is that to to listen to teachings on fasting like Shepard Bashir's, Jensen Franklin's, um, Derek Prince and there's many many others because when you listen to for example if you're fasting and you're listening on business you're like man what am I doing here 
the guy went in and found another guy and he got a breakthrough in the business and here I am starving and so you're gonna feel like this starvation is not working if you're gonna listen on marriage you're gonna be discouraged in your fasting but when you listen on fasting while you're fasting it energizes you it's like man what I'm doing is good God's gonna reward me as he rewarded that man of God he's gonna bless me as well number five try different fasts in January you know we're hoping to do a 21 day fast as a church where a few days you will do just completely uh, just on water and the rest of it on the Daniel's fast and so that we will present different options don't just think I can't go without food I'm not gonna try this whole idea you're still a disciple of Jesus and Jesus says not if you fast but when you fast that means it has to be part of your routine and number six how you enter and how you end matters meaning if you decide to fast tomorrow for example if you didn't fast this month and you're saying you know what Vlad I'm encouraged tomorrow I'm gonna start fasting do not eat enchiladas at 11 50 p.m today you wanted to end very light dinner and you want to enter in so that you don't fill yourself when I was younger and a little bit unwise I remember we declared a 21 day fast and uh, right at 11 40 I quickly got in the car, ran to the gas station, ate the hot dog because I knew that for next 21 days I won't see food and so and that was very unwise. How you exit fasting actually will reveal how much fruit of self-control you currently have because typically when you leave the fast you're like yes I'm gonna eat a little bit of soup and then you just go at it. You're like for all those 20 days or three days I didn't eat I'm just gonna reward myself your immune system gets rebooted during fasting if you start stuffing yourself with the same kind of food out of control you will go back to the same unhealthy body that you had before um, the holy spirit is actually at the end of your fast begins to speak to you um, this week uh, i had a chance to fast and so end, uh, ended it a week of fast uh, yesterday and uh, and my mom sent this picture of uh, that she made the cinnamon rolls and so my fast was already over and and I kind of made a decision I'm gonna tone down on this and this and that and and I was like that's it you know less this less this I'm gonna just kind of maintain health and and so I was like okay I'm gonna go to my mom's house one cinnamon roll and so but you know you're sitting there you're talking you're like man I didn't eat for a whole week <laughs> one cinnamon roll I mean two is not gonna hurt and I remember second cinnamon roll and then I hear the Holy Spirit it's very still and small so lad stop and I was like you don't care about cinnamon rolls you only care about my righteousness and holiness but see he cares about self-control and self-control is developed with cinnamon rolls <laughs> and after sixth cinnamon roll I was like okay this is not good I'm driving home and I remember I'm driving home and uh, and I hear the Holy Spirit convict me so Vlad you just lost it today and I was like I didn't do anything he says this the fruit of self-control was lost when the fourth cinnamon has entered your body <laughs> be careful how you end the fast amen and seven always consult your doctor if you have illnesses or other troubles in your body